Welcome back everyone, it's me, your favorite Blender user. It's facts. For today's video, we're gonna be making Dr. Octopus's hands. Um, Probably one of my favorite villains. I mean, can you really call him a villain? I don't know. But anyways, I just watched the Spider-Man movie like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know, I could probably make this myself. Um, the model's a lot simpler than you might think. I mean, it might look very complicated, which it kind of is, but it's pretty simple. If you're new here, go to that subscribe button. We're very close to a thousand subscribers. Would love to hit that soon, probably in the next, I don't know, couple of weeks or so. And um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's get started then. We've got the reference image up here on the top left, as you can see, I kind of just compiled a bunch of them. If you want them, maybe the link down below. I'll leave you over there. Kind of got like the little triangular shape. So yeah, let's get started. As usual, I have no idea I'm gonna make it, but we'll figure it out as we go. So let me turn the screen cast so you can see what I'm doing. So on the bottom left, it will kind of show you what keys I'm pressing so you can follow along a little bit easier. Okay. Ah, let's see if I can do this. So I'm thinking if we start with like a cross section of it, and then we can kind of extrude that out to make it 3D, if that makes sense. So let's bring in a circle. Let's turn on snapping tool, which I've never used before, but I mean, I know what it does. It kind of just snaps things to the grid. So let's kind of move that up. Let's say something like that. Let's duplicate that down. Got to move that to the right. Actually, I might, yeah. I might just bring it up actually. Something like that. There we go. That looks a bit better. So let's join the two. So select the two, press Ctrl J. Let's go into edit mode. And I'm going to delete half of this. Because obviously, going to use a mirror modifier. Okay, so that's not working. That doesn't work. Obviously, it's a transform. So press Ctrl A. And then apply all transforms. Basically, just resets everything. Okay. Alright, so we need to somehow join these two circles. So I just duplicate this first. That's going to be the middle part. Okay. So we need to connect these two. So I'm going to bring in a circle. Let's rotate that. Scale this one up. Let's turn on portion editing. And it's kind of actually let me turn on snapping. Let's just kind of position it where we need to be, basically. We just need part of the circle, not the whole thing. So I'm going to delete these two vertices here, so it's this one and that one, and press delete vertices. There we go. Okay. So let's get rid of this other part. So just delete that. And then just kind of move this out. Maybe we can scale it out a little bit more. Just to line it up a little bit better. Let me just move this in. Use proportional editing also. Just kind of makes it easier for you. Just use the mouse for the scroll out, you know, affect the larger area. So select these two vertices, press F to make a face, well, to make an edge to join the two. Something like that. Let's do the same thing down here. Select these two, press F. Okay. So now I'm gonna select a row out of this curve we just made, kind of just positioning it a little bit. Again, this will, yours will look different depending on whatever um, reference image you use. If you use mine or you get your own. Because there are a bunch of different models out there. So yeah, duplicate that part. Kind of position it where you need it to be. Something like that's probably pretty good. Let's turn on clipping on the mirror modifier. So they join in the middle. So if you look on this reference image here, you can see there's like a little peak over there. So I kind of want to replicate that at the bottom a little bit. It's a bit more dynamic looking. And as you can see, each reference image looks different. <laughs> I found like seven different models when I was looking for this online, so yeah. But anyways, let's kind of line this up how we want. Let's join these two here. So select the two, press M, and then merge at center. So M is to merge, basically. It's a little hockey. So I'm going to kind of shape this around. I miss just guessing right now, to be honest. Whatever I think would look good. Okay. That's not too bad. So we have the basic shape of it, right? Obviously, there are no faces right now. But we have the right shape, I think. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. So now we need to add a bunch of faces, basically. And keep everything flowing. That's the main part. I want a clean topology, right? So maybe we can extrude these out. Go another around the shape and then make a face. 
obviously that's going to take way too long i don't have time to be doing all of that so let's delete all of that let's select this row so select one edge and then call control select the off edge can't speak duplicate that so we have the same amount of vertices like that and then instead of moving it and trying to line it up let's just scale that up so press l to select linked so hover over and press l and then scale it up now we can join these two again select them and press m merge at center and delete the edges now we can fill in the faces so select four vertices and press f and if you want to make a face quickly just select an edge and press f it will make a face along the corresponding edge i think so the following edge will turn into a face so yeah just fill these in try to select four where you can if you have to select a triangle so three edges it doesn't really matter because this mesh it will not deform so it won't be as big as of a deal there we go just make all of these faces here cool okay so do the same thing again let's select the row duplicate that and then for this we're going to scale it closely and then select this full here and make a face again select an edge and press f and then that will just make a face along the next line and then join this last part okay so we're getting there slowly for this one we can just duplicate it and then right click after duplicate so that it doesn't move and then let's just kind of move it out and then again just like we did earlier add the faces pretty simple see all these tutorials have to be all complicated you know what i mean i'm trying to keep them as simple as possible so then let's join these two here oops select four and then press f okay all right so here we can see we can't just keep adding faces because obviously they're not in line so to keep it clean we can add a um a loop cut so Control r that adds another basically a line oh, a line it adds a, i don't even have to explain a loop cut <laughs> it just adds a row of vertices so just try to make everything flow oops let's collect these bottom ones so select these four i hope this is making sense i might be going a bit too fast but all we're doing is just adding faces so i'll probably speed this part up but all it is just kind of copy a curve or an area duplicate it position it you know and then just add a face or join them too and try to keep everything flowing as you can see so we're going to go all the way around so yeah i'm gonna speed this part up all right, so this is what the topology is looking like right now. So let me just show you topology real quick. As you can see, very simple. It's that same steps we did earlier. It's not perfect, you know, it's not the cleanest, but it works and that's all that matters. As you can see, everything's kind of flowing nicely. So that's all you need basically. So um, I guess you could screenshot this and try to replicate it. You know, if you wanted to go above and beyond, screenshot it and then import into blender use that as a reference itself <laughs> that would be kind of funny so let's add a solidify modifier to it just give it a bit more thickness so as you can see up here it's quite thick all right so let's just add a solidify modifier oh perfect so you see right now it's kind of messed up a little bit so all you have to do is just the normals that are messed up so press a to select everything press alt n and then recalculate outside and as you can see now the solidify is flipped so same thing old n but recalculate inside let's recalculate so the normals makes makes them all even so that looks about right i think that's enough thickness something like that so go w shade smooth might look a bit ugly so go down to the object properties the little green triangle go to normals and turn on auto smooth perfect gives it a cleaner look basically all right, so let's add a bevel modifier to it. Here's a little quick tip, actually. There's nothing in real life that's actually completely sharp. So there's no super straight edge in real life. Everything has a little bit of a bevel to it. So if you want your models to be a bit more realistic, just add a little bevel to it. As you can see in the reference image here, you know, nothing's actually fully sharp. So yeah, little quick tip. You don't have to do it, but you know, just keep it in mind. You probably won't even notice it, but it's there. So yeah, let's play with this. It's like it's not really doing anything, so ah, I don't know. I'll just pick whatever. I'll go with that. Okay. 
that looks pretty good so that's pretty clean that's one vertebrae i guess you could call it so if you look here we have these panels here as well there's three panels right which are like kind of these outer faces going around which just adds a bit more detail so to do that let's firstly apply the um solidify modifier let's do that nice so now we have this face to work with so let's add a loop cut so Control r and then press Control b to add a bevel in this case it just adds two more loop cuts along the side nice let's rename this vertebrae so f2 to rename perfect again call it whatever you want you don't have to call it vertebrae so now that we have that let's select the areas we want to use as the panels and by the way hold it down control as i'm selecting just to make it a lot faster so select the faces you want so i'm gonna go with all of these one here okay and then let's go into front view let's duplicate so shift d let's bring it out a little bit where we want and then let's press p to separate and then select by selection so that will separate it whatever we selected it will separate it into its own object so let's give that its own solidify turn it up until it's barely intersecting with the original model there we go so let's do the same thing for the other panels as well so let's select the next part we want to kind of extrude out so go back into edit mode and then let's just select this part here or whatever you decide basically so i'm gonna go with this nice and then same thing front view shift d to duplicate to about the same level as the last one press p separate by selection and give us solidify so i'm gonna do the same thing for the next parts and i'll probably speed that part up okay perfect so now we have this right here so let me select it and then let's just scale it out a little bit to the sides. So S and then Y. Bring that out, something like that maybe. Let's see how it looks. Maybe a little bit more. Move it back in. Mm, I think that'll do. So you just wanted to give it a bit of like a, you know, stand out a little bit. So let's add these little extrusions here on the side. So I'm gonna select, you know what, let's add a loop cut, Control R, add a loop cut. And let's add a loop cut to everywhere as well before we start extruding, just so they all line up. And then, yeah, that looks all right. So now let's just select the face if we want to extrude. So I'm gonna start from here, select that. Go to the last one you wanna select and press Control before you click it. So I'm trying to get it lost here. So let's find it. I think it's over there. So press control and then right click. Now it will select all the faces in between them. So that's what control does. Let's do the same thing here. Shift control and then up here. There we go. Okay. Now if you just press extrude, you can see it's not extruding how we want. It's kind of just extruding along a random axis, which we don't want. So let's press Alt E and then extrude along normals. So let's go into front view. Alt E, like shoot along normals. Now you can see it's coming out how we want it. It's coming out in like an even way, following the normals. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Let's add a loop cut here, bring it down a little bit. Let's do the same thing with the bottom one. Add a loop cut, just bring it down a tad bit. Perfect. There we go. It just adds a bit more detail to it, you know, makes it look a bit, a bit more mechanical, I guess. Here we go liking that so now let's make this these tubes here on the other side again very simple so let's select here let's let me try this out. I don't think it's gonna work since this is not an actual circle which is a semicircle let's go shift s yep didn't work that didn't work either you know what let me just click in the middle it doesn't have to be perfect anyways put a cursor in the middle and then let's bring in a cylinder let's rotate that 90 degrees and that fits pretty well maybe we can just move a little bit let's scale it down to the size we want so about there 
Okay. Let's bring this forward a little bit. So I'm gonna scale it inwards just a tiny bit. You can see it has these little ridges here that kind of elevate. Some parts are elevated and other parts are kind of little cavities. So let's go into edit mode. Let's add a loop cut. Let's add another one along the sides. So let's let these two here, press control B and then scroll it out. Make sure you scroll it once. So if you scroll it once, you should have three lines, as you can see. The more you scroll it, the more lines you get, basically. It kind of subdivides it. So we only want three lines, like so. And then let's press three, make sure it's face select. And then let's press Alt E, extrude the log normals, just like earlier. And we can bring this out to whatever height we want, basically. So let's look at it on the front. We can scale it up maybe a little bit more, something like that. We don't want it actually touching the sides of the um, the vertebrae. And there we go. So we have one tube here. So let's just move this back, like somewhere in the middle. There we go. So this would be our they like basically our base vertebrae at the beginning. If that makes sense. Perfect. There we go. So let's select this. Looks good. And let's add an array modifier to make more of them basically. So add array. Zero on the X. We want it on the Y. Minus one. Okay, so Y is not the right axis. So let's put that zero and let's go to Z. Okay, so Z is the right axis. So let's go Z. Type in um, one. There we go. Now, if we turn this up, you can see we get more of them. This is just a faster way of doing it, basically. There we go, W, shade smooth. Again, same thing, go to normals, O2 smooth. Perfect. There we go. You can see it's already coming along. Now with this selected, let's duplicate it and then we're gonna put it down here on the sides. So Shift D, move that up along the Z, scale that down. Let's bring it down to somewhere in the middle. There we go, it's not to be perfect again. You could turn the snapping too, which I kind of forgot to do, but whatever, this will do. Something like that. Turn that up a little bit. And then let's duplicate it down here. So Shift D, and then let's bring it down. For this one, we can actually select here because it's an actual circle. And let's press Shift S. Cursor to selected, it will be in the middle. And then we can select this, press Shift S, and then select it to cursor. Where is it? There we go. So that will snap it there. So now it's sitting actually in the middle of the circle. Let's set the main vertebrae and add an array to that one too. And then just trying to find an axis. Okay, so Z is not working for this one either. So it's actually going to be Y. So it's going to be minus one because it wants to go the opposite way. Turn that up. Let's say 20 or something, right? Turn that up maybe. Something like that. You can kind of see where we're getting at. Right, so maybe 80. Again, you could choose whatever you want, but I think that's probably enough. Here we go. Let's do the same thing for the middle part. I'll probably end up joining these two together later on, but for now, let's just keep it separate. Let's add an array modifier to it. Again, the exact same thing. Minus one. And then add 80. Okay, so the reason they're not lining up is because they don't have the same scale applied to both of them, if that makes sense. Because they're two separate objects. Then we can carry on bringing it up. Or like I said, I'll probably end up joining the two together. So let me reduce this down. Make my computer run a bit faster. So let's see what happens when I turn this down. Are they lining up? So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that too. And then let's just join these two, like I said. So select, let's apply the mirror. That one hasn't got solidify as it. Let's apply the mirror to that as well. So, oh, actually, let's keep the mirror, right? So forget everything I said. <laughs> we want to keep the mirror there. And um, for now, at least. Make sure they both mirrored on the same side. Yes, perfect. So let's apply the solidify. And then let's join the two. 
So they have they have matching. We're gonna have matching um modifiers before we join the two. So we get something like this, perfect. That looks a little better. So now when we add an array to it, it will actually you know project it properly. So let's try that again. Let's control A apply all transforms this time. So let's turn off, let's turn that to zero and then play with the Y. Let's go minus one, just like before. And then turn this up to whatever you want. All right. That's a lot better. So let's extrude this dude as well. Or actually turn up the number. I'll probably end up joining the tubes together as well later on, but for now I'm gonna leave it like this. Here we go. Turn this up. It might slow your computer down the more arrays you add, but for now I think this will do. Okay. Let's add a bit more to this one just so we can see it. Let's add a mirror modifier to this one. Mirror select this middle piece. There we go. Alright, perfect. Hopefully you can kind of see where we're getting at, right? We're basically making like one arm almost done in like less than 10 minutes. Obviously we're gonna add more detail to it, but for now, we do have the basic shape. There we go. So let me space this out a little bit because they're very crowded right now. Let's just turn it up a bit. Again, I'm just going by the reference image. Maybe it looks a bit better. It could be bigger, maybe. Okay, that might be too wide. You don't want them spaced out too much, but it seems that you don't want them crowded, if that makes sense. So, just go with whatever you like, whatever you feel like. Turn this back down. Turn it up once. Okay, there we go. Perfect. That looks much better. So, all that's left now is to either add a curve modifier to curve them into whatever shape you want or even better we can add in a couple bones and armature basically so we can control it and animate it so as you can see here those that reference image here is a lot thicker than the other one so like i said depending on whichever reference image you use yours might come out a bit different so let's select these let's go into edit mode and then hovering over these just press l it will select linked so all the linked vertices and then let's scale this along the y just to make it a little bit thicker, because it was looking a bit too thin. So something like that, that looks much better. Okay. Let's move forward a tiny bit. There we go. I gotta remember, the more arrays you add, it will slow your computer down a little bit. Obviously depending on your specs, but yeah. So let's reduce the array. The gap a little bit. Okay. And again, you can play with this to, with, to whatever you want. You know, if, that's, if this is too thin for you, you could, you know, space it out a little bit more. It's really up to you. Okay. All right, so let's add a bit more detail to this. This little model real quick. So let's come in here. I'm going to add the two little, the, the circles I kind of extruded out. I don't know what you would call them. So I'm going to add a little cut here. And then maybe do the same thing. Let me hide this array because it's kind of slowing down. I'm adding another loop cut on the other side. Something like that. So we have a square here and another square there. So we can select the two. And then let's inset them. And maybe these two as well. So yeah. Press the period button and go to individual origins. And then press I to inset them. Like so. Let's add a loop cut here. Let's select these here. Just add another loop cut here. You want it to have eight vertices, if that makes sense. For the for what I'm about to do to work. So I'll show you in a sec. Let me just kind of drag this down a little bit. Give it a bit more space. Double press G to slide them down. And then move these down as well. Just a tiny bit. Don't worry about them kind of tapering out a little bit. All right, so you want to select this row except for the middle, right? Oops. So you select all of these. And then if you have loot tools add-ons turned on, if you don't, just go to edit, preferences, 
you can't really see because it's in the way so edit preferences add-ons and then search for loop tools and then make sure it's turned on and then obviously just save the preferences so let's select this press w loop tools and circle you can see it just gives you a perfect circle that you can work off of great let's do the same thing down here so let's select all of these w loop tools circle just like that maybe scale them down a tiny bit okay now let's go into face select mode and select all of these faces here and then we're going to extrude this out just to give a bit more detail make it look mechanical like it's a bolt or something so let's press alt e and then extrude along normals just like before let's go i don't know not too much something like that and then I'm going to select this edge, this outer edge. Make sure you have Alt, um, make sure you press down Alt while you select. And let's press Control B to add a bevel. And again, if you scroll up on your middle mouse button, it's going to add more vertices. So yeah, that looks pretty good. If you don't want the little square thing showing up here, we can select these corners. Double press G to slide them in. To kind of make it look a, a bit cleaner. There we go. You can see it just makes it look kind of a bit more tight. All right. So after that, is there any more detail we can add to this? Let me just see. I mean, you could add as much or as little as you want. You don't have to follow what I'm doing exactly, but I think that looks pretty good. Don't want it looking too complicated either. Actually, I might. I might make like a little nut looking thing in this middle. So let's go to face select and inset it. And then I again probably. Let's go W circle. Okay. I think that's good enough. And then again, Alt E. And then extrude out. And I think this looks like a bolt. Does a bolt have six sides? A bolt? I mean a nut. I think it has six sides, I don't know. For this one, yeah. I'm gonna just select this front face and then insert it. And then we're gonna extrude this in. So now we've got a nut. Pause. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, that looks a little better. Again, just like before, we can drag these in. Double press G. Okay. Alright, so this is what we got. Looking pretty good. Also, one more thing. If you see any artifacts like this, you see this line going through the middle here. As you can see, it's kind of faint, but you can see it. What that means is that within the mirror operation, there's a face that's interacting with itself, if that makes sense. So if you're going to edit mode, there's a face in between these. That's basically being mirrored to itself. So let's press OZ to go X-ray mode and then select that face there, or all of these basically. The reason why that makes a problem is that the faces are being mirrored on themselves. That's that's basically why you, have, you get this line there, I think. So just delete those faces, basically. Select them and delete them. So if you get any lines anywhere, just delete all of those. So yeah, it usually just happens with it where the um the mirror operation meets, right? So I'm gonna isolate this and just check it real quick. Let's check this bottom here. There we go. So just go from object mode to edit mode, and you can see that line there as well. So let's get rid of that. As you can see there's a bunch of faces here. So just select all of these. All of these ones up here as well. Get rid of all of those. We don't want any faces in the middle. We want it to be hollow, basically. Just think about like a real actual object. Obviously, it's going to be hollow in the middle where the two sides meet. For the most part. So let's delete that. Perfect. I mean, if it's, if it's a solid piece. Okay. So let's make the end of this. Or the arm part, the hand part, I should say. So I'm gonna turn up the array. Don't forget to save. Okay, so let's just pick where we want this to end, basically. So I want to see a bit more shadows and stuff. So let's go to matte cap, and let's say just shiny one. Just to see how the um topology is. If there's any areas where the normals are kind of messed up, it it will show up. So you can pick whichever map cap you want. Let's go back to studio. Okay. And let's turn on cavity. That's it. Look at that there to just um 
just makes everything pop a bit more kind of adds like ambient occlusion to the corners kind of adds shadow and highlights basically it's literally just shadows and highlights so i'm gonna turn off the shadows though because i don't want shadows it kind of distracts me a little bit so yeah let's make the hands so okay that's i don't know about that one i want to pick that picture for the actual like spines so it's fine with an arm this one actually found on instagram funnily enough it kind of came up on a reel or something like that okay this is a very simple shape just a bunch of cubes and cylinders that kind of just need to be reshaped so let's do that real quick so let's decide where this arm ends first of all i think this might be long enough maybe we can reduce the array on these ones let's do the same thing here i might just have it sticking out just a little bit 190 there we go whatever right something like that okay but to make the background disappear just come up here to overlays and just turn that off you could also choose what you want to be turned off so if you want to turn to the floor click floor if you want to turn off certain axes turn those off etc or you can just press it to turn everything off there we go kind of close it up a little bit so it doesn't get too distracting so let's turn that back on go to side view okay so let's say i wanted to add here which i do <laughs> So you can see here, we've got a cylinder with kind of three parts sticking out. All right, so let's make that real quick. Let's go Shift A. Let's bring in a cylinder. Let's isolate on its own. Let's go to the top view. Okay. So there's a hole in the middle. So let's bring it back to the center point. So press Alt G to clear any movements and press period button to kind of zoom in. Okay, so in the top view, let's scale it up a little bit. There's no specific number, but you can turn on snapping. Something like that. About that big. Let's go front view, scale that down along the Z to about there, something like that. So to make a hole into anything, you can select the top face and the bottom face. Let's insert them. So press I to insert to whatever you, you want it to be. Maybe something like that. So with them both still selected, search up bridge edge loops. So for me, my shortcut is spacebar for search. For yours, it might be different, depending on how you set your blender up. So search for bridge edge loops, click that, and now you get a hole in between them. It just bridges between the two faces. Let's add a loop cut in the middle and on the outside too. Simple. All right. So to break this shape down real quick, what do we have here? So we have this part extruded, and there's a hinge there, I'm assuming. And then we have this piece here, and then another hinge, and then another piece, and then we have this claw-looking end part. So it's like four pieces in total, I think, four or five. Okay. So for now, let's just extrude these kind of three sides out. So let's delete half of it, and use the mirror modifier. So let's delete these faces delete all of these vertices perfect let's add a mirror modifier turn on clipping let's make sure there isn't a face in the middle like i mentioned earlier nice let's go top view okay we just need to decide which faces we're going to extrude so let's let this middle line and press ctrl b just add two more vertices and i think about there is probably right Something like that. We don't want to all the way, obviously go all the way to the top. Let's go back to the top view. So this one's going to come out there and this one that way. So let's just select the faces we want, basically, that we want to extrude. So I'm sure you can bring some math into this to calculate the even amount, but <laughs> I can't be bothered, bro. Let's just select these ones. I'm just, I'm just guessing. So row of five, I guess. And then top view. And then let's select the front two. So let's just count five from the center. Four, five. Select these five here. Actually, I just realized this is mirrored. So if I select five, it's actually going to be 10 because it's been mirrored. So let's select three to keep it even. So it's going to be six now, basically. So let's make this six as well. So six on one side and three on the top because it's been mirrored. Genius. All right. I think that's probably enough. Let's go top view. 
and again press alt e extrude load normals and now you see extruding load normals isn't working for our case right which is exactly what we don't want it's looking like a hazardous sign or something all right so for this one we don't want to use extrude load normals so let's just press e to extrude there we go the top is a bit messed up but we can fix that so about there looks about right for this one you can press so you can go to um x-ray mode or whatever select these faces and we're just going to move them sideways along the x top view and let's just bring them in along the x something like that looks pretty good and let's go select all of them and press obviously we want to flatten them so s y zero we should flatten them straight okay this one's going to be a bit trickier obviously we can't use the x or the y or the z so let me just move this down let's go to orientation let's go to normal instead of global so I come up here it would usually be in global so that means x is this red line y is this green line obviously that's not lining up with our model so let's go to normal so that's going to use the faces themselves their own axis so let's go scale so x is changed as you can see now y is changed too and it's probably going to be z there we go and press zero so s z zero perfect Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Let's add a bevel on top of this, just to make it look a bit better. One thing you should know, I love my bevels, right? I'll use them any chance I get. So let's select these two and press Control B. Actually, we might do it inside as well. Might as well. So press Control B, and you can see it's not really beveling up as evenly as it should. So what that means is just need to apply the transform. So Control A, apply all transforms, and then now you can see it's a lot more even. So I'm going to scroll that once because I want it to be a flat. If you scroll it, it's going to make it curved, basically. I don't want it to be curved, I want it to be flat. It looks a bit more machined when it's flat, isn't it? Like it's been hit with a lathe or something. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I did my uh, 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 engineering. Talk to me nice. All right, anyways. I get sidetracked. Um, So we got something like this, right? That was pretty simple. I think that's the... Art. Yeah, that's about the same length, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is add a loop cut. Let me bring it down here to about there. Scale Z zero. Make sure you're still in normal as your orientation. Same thing here. Bring it back there. Let's go. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off for this one. Scale Y zero. Perfect. Move up a little bit. Now what I'm about to do is probably a little bit extra, but it might make it a little bit nicer. I'm just going to make a hole in the middle where the next piece is going to sit into, if that makes sense. So I'm going to select this face here, all of these faces, and delete those, like so. Do the same thing down here. Delete faces. These bottom ones as well. Perfect. All right. So now we just need to fill this gap, basically. So let's select this top edge here and press E to extrude and bring those down and then select these four to make a face so this one, that one, that one and then press F to make a face just fills it in basically press F, make a face and then do the same thing at the bottom so select four and then press F this is probably the most satisfying thing personally just adding faces, I don't know, kind of like it so that's how this piece is going to join to the next one Kind of like basically any hinge system, right? There needs to be somewhere where the next piece fits into. If that makes sense. Again, I'm not an engineer. So let's delete these, do the same thing here. Select these two. Okay. I'm going to add a bevel to this real quick. Again, just scrolling it once because I want it to be kind of flat looking. Probably do the same for the bottom too. All right, so don't forget to save. Cool, so we have this, right? Now let's make this part here. All right, so we end up with something like this. So I'm thinking, hmm, how should I do this? You know what, let's start over here. Let's, so I'm probably bringing a cylinder or something to act as like the hinge. So let's select these faces here, press Shift S, cursor to select it. And then let's go back into top view and let's bring in a cylinder. Let's rotate that a little bit. 
and then scale it down to whatever size you want I probably don't need to do this because obviously you probably won't even see this but I just like being extra in it I don't know it's something fun by making it so let's add a loop cut in the middle and then we're going to scale along the X not that much obviously if you guessed already we're going to give it a mirror modifier so something like this right okay so we need to make this piece here it's kind of just like a flattened cube basically isn't it with two little cylinders so let's go shift s cursor selected to bring that to the middle there and then let's bring in our cube to make the next part of the um i don't know what you call these fingers i don't know so let's get it down just to fit in there kind of position it nice nicely scale it up a little bit more i don't think these edges here are straight so let's flatten these faces here so i just select these three faces here and we're gonna go s x zero just to make sure they're nice and straight. Here we go. Okay, that looks better. Cool. All right, so we just need to extrude this out, basically. So I'm gonna select this face here, bring it forwards. Not extrude it, just bring it forwards. Let's just see how long we want this. So it's longer than the previous part we made, I think, so. Maybe something like that, I don't know. We can change the size later anyways. So let's add a loop cut, bring it back. Bring that down. Let's select the side faces. Okay. Let's extrude these. How much do we want them to come out? Maybe something like that. Because that looks a bit too short. Let's just kind of bring these forwards. Okay, that looks a bit better. Okay. I'm going to loop cut down the middle and delete one half because obviously we're going to give it a middle. A little bit. A mirror modifier. Honestly, I can't speak, bro. All right. Add a mirror modifier to it. Turn on clipping. Okay. All right. So I wanted to taper towards the end here, so we can go into X-ray mode and just bring these along the X. Actually, before we do that, real quick, I did realize here it kind of comes out backward. It's kind of extruded backwards, basically. Kind of links up to the hinge. If that makes sense, so I'm add a loop cut here, and then maybe add another one here, something like that. Let's select this face here, and then extrude that out. Okay, something like this, and let's select this edge here. Press Control B, add a bevel. Maybe scroll up once or twice. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. Now let's get rid of this end gone. I mean, you don't have to do this, but I just like being extra. So I'm going to press K to draw where I want the line to be. So let's say there. And then I'm going to link it there. Select these two, press J. And then press J. Just to like merge them, basically. Not merge them, but to join them. It just adds another line, basically. So now we can select these and bring these over on the X. These ones two. Okay, here we go. Not too bad. No. All right. Let me get this edge here and the bottom one. Gonna bevel that. Just make it a bit more rounded. Okay. Just make the cylinder a bit longer as well. Make it come out a little bit. Just scale it into this poking out a little bit. Okay. Let's delete one half. Obviously, add a mirror modifier too. Okay, I'm going to join it onto this, so select the two, press Control J. There we go, and then I'm just going to add a bevel to this, just to make it rounded. So Control B. Mm, okay, I think that looks good enough. Alright. Cool, let's add a bevel modifier to it, just like I mentioned earlier, it always makes everything look better. Let's add three probably, yeah. That'll do it. Let's stay smooth. Okay, perfect. All right, so we got this piece done, All right? So let's add these cylinders here. I don't even know what they are, the hydraulics, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is, let me pull this back out a little bit, just to make it a bit more even. Something like that. 
I'm going to extrude this top part here basically. So I think that's all I'm going to select and then let's extrude that up. I don't know if you can end up from the reference image but that's basically what it has. Maybe scale along the X a little bit. Let's select this inner edge here. So this line there, as you can see. And then let me just pull that along the X, kind of just pull it back a little bit. There we go. Make it a little bit thinner. I think that's what's happening on the reference image. I'm not too sure, but I'm going to just go with that. I think it looks good enough. Bring these down. Again, like I said earlier, depending on your reference image, obviously you're going to have different results. So it's really up to you. I'm telling you, there's like so many different models out there, like different versions of the arm. So these ones aren't probably the most, you know, accurate to the movie, but it works in it. You can get the idea. So I'm just tapering everything here. There we go. Make it look a bit nicer. Don't forget to save. You don't want to lose your work. Okay. So it's taking shape already. Perfect. All right. So let's go back into top view. Let's just click this 3D cursor away from the center and add in a cylinder. Rotate down 90 degrees. Scale that down. Scale along the Y. Basically, just follow the reference image. Just bring that back in. Something like that. I'm going to rotate that. Something like that, I guess, works. Let's bring this up a little bit. Okay. And again, I don't even know what this is supposed to be, but I'm just guessing it's like some sort of hydraulic system to move the um, fingers or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. Oops, let's turn off clipping. Should have done that earlier. Basically, when you have clipping on, whatever um, vertices are in the middle, right, where the mirror modifier is like being applied, those vertices will be joined together. They'll be stuck. So if you want to be able to move certain objects around in edit mode, without you know without it being stuck to the middle you have to turn off clipping so i'm just add a loop cut here which is bisect there we go so it just cuts through it it basically just adds a loop cut through the mesh but you have to make sure you select the part where you want to add this bisect you can see there on the bottom left too and by the way, to see the menu on the left side of my screen, just press T. All right. So I'm going to delete this face here, just like before, just for the hinge. And then we're going to do the same thing as before, and then just fill in the faces, etc. All right. So let's give these cylinders a bit more, a bit more detail. So let's select this face here and insert that. So I, and then insert it again. I'm going to extrude that forwards, and then press I to insert it again, and then extrude that back in. Just to give it some sort of purpose, make it look like there's something going in there. So I'll probably add some sort of tube to that. So with the face tool selected, press Shift S, cursor to selected. You should know that by now. Just to bring everything to the middle. And let's add in a curve, a path. There we go. Let's go to top view and rotate that kind of align it with the um with the circle. Or the cylinder, sorry. And we're gonna use this to make a tube basically. Now, you might be thinking, why aren't I using a cylinder to make this? But I'll show you in a sec. So let's go to side view and kind of curve this around. So I'm going to bring this down like this. So it looks like it's going into whatever this piece is. Like it's feeding into the cylinder, basically. Again, I know this, this probably doesn't make any mechanical sense or whatever, but <laughs> that's not the point. Now, let's go top view. It's going to bring this out a little bit. Something like that, right? Simple. So with the curve still selected, um, go down to here, this little green semicircle, whatever that is, curve settings. Go to geometry, go to bevel, and then play with the depth. And as you can see, it gives it thickness. Turns it to a tube. So this, obviously, this method is a lot easier because when you go back into edit mode, you can still edit it, as you can see. This way is basically a lot better than using cylinders. It's more intuitive anyways. But yeah, let's add a mirror modifier to that. But we're going to end up, you know, applying that mirror later on. But for now, this will do. Simple. So there you go. It makes it look a bit more, I don't know, like it has purpose. So it's not just like some sort of cylinder just floating in the air or anything. But yeah, I don't know. I think it just probably just makes it look a bit a bit better. Again, just little details like this. You know, you don't have to add this, etc. But I think it will make it look a little bit better. All right, cool. 
So let's bring in another queue for the next part. All right, nice. So let's break this next piece down. So we have this main piece, right, which is this kind of middle piece here, right? So that'll be the first one. And then we got this part, which what we just made, right? With the two cylinders on there. Then we have this other part here that we need to make, which is pretty straightforward. It's just one piece. All right, so let's get started with that. Okay, let's bring in a cube. And then we're going to mirror it, delete one half. You know how it goes. So let's scale it down to fit in here. Something like that. Bring it forward a little bit. Let's add a loop cut. Delete one half. As usual. Same process. Alright, so then let's extrude this front face here. Something like that. I think, I think it's about the same size or the same length as the last piece we made. So let's select this side piece here and extrude that out. Something like that. Nice. Now let's give a little bit more detail. And by detail, I'm in bevel. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love adding bevels. So let's select this edge here. So or these three or four, sorry. So let's select this middle ones too. Don't forget those. And then control B to add a bevel. I think that's good enough. And that's basically it for this part, I'm pretty sure. All right, so now that we have this, let's make this final part. <sighs> Almost there. So same steps. Add in a cube, bring that forwards up here. Mm. Actually, before that, let's let's add a loop cut here, and just delete that one that one part. As you can see, for this piece, the um the kind of hinge area is not this middle piece; it's the other side. It's the opposite, basically. So yeah, so I'm just gonna select these side pieces here and get rid of those, and then we're just gonna fill them in just like we did earlier, the same exact steps. All right, so let's delete all of these sides here, faces. There we go. So we left with something like this and then let's just fill this area so select the edges extrude them down fill them by the way for the mirror modifier i applied the x and the z all right so parts like this can seem tricky but let me show you how you would fill this so i'm going to extrude this connect four again just try to keep it fours i'm going to loop cut here and then connect the next four and then we have this last four here and there you go pretty simple not too complicated there we go as you can see, just very simple techniques. The hard part, I guess, would just be kind of finding how you would go about it. That was, I don't know why that was so hard to explain. But yeah, let's delete one half. We're going to add the mirror modifier to it. Actually, I'm just going to join it to this so that it automatically gives it a mirror. I'll separate them later on, but for now. As you can see, it gives it its own bevel modifier and everything. All right, cool. I'm going to add a loop cut right here. Let me just select this face here. I'm going to extrude that up just to give it a bit more detail. Now, on the reference image, you can't really see the inside of this piece, but I'm guessing this is what it looks like. So, I'm going to bring this edge out a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Guess that works. I don't know. We'll go with that. I'm going to taper this because I don't like straight edges. There we go. All right. Something like this would do. I feel like the more, I mean, you can add more detail to like make it look better, but I think this works. Perfect. All right, so for the last piece, let's do this um end piece, which is kind of like a excavator looking thing. I don't know what you call it. As you can see, it's, it's basically just a cube that's been shaped down, I guess. So it has a bevel, well, it has two bevels. So it has that edge and then this edge. So we need to add two bevels and then on the end there to make it a bit more rounded and then just cut out the three three gaps in the middle uh, so let's scale this up a little bit more bring this back how long do we want it so i'll probably pull this out just a tiny bit more something like that i'm just guessing by the way so let's delete one half as usual add a mirror modifier i feel like this is just standard now turn on clipping now let's get started uh, so let's bring this up maybe about there maybe do the same with this top one bring that down a little bit try to keep everything on the same th thickness so let's select this edge here press ctrl b and then scroll down i'm gonna bevel that obviously remember this piece right now is technically upside down so 
Let's add another bevel here. Mm. Actually, let's select these two and then move them back. By the way, I'm in X-ray mode, so press Alt-Z so that you can select through the mesh. So select both sides. All right, and I think that looks pretty good, to be honest, as a base shape. So let's select these two edges here. So this one and that one. And then Control b to bevel those. And then scroll up maybe twice. Just to make it rounded, going off the uh, reference image, where it looks like at least. All right, cool. I think that's pretty nice. There we go. Great. All right, so let's go back into top view. We're looking at the bottom of the piece, by the way. Like I said earlier, it's upside down. So let's add these um these cuts here. So let's. All right, so we're gonna add a loop cut here. But remember, this is mirrored, so whatever thickness you see, it's gonna be doubled from the other side. Obviously, only in the middle. So it's gonna be doubled. So about that thick. All right, so I have one there. Maybe add three or four. I don't know. I'm gonna add another one here. All right, so let's delete these faces here. Try not to get too confused with this. I know it can get a bit confusing with all these lines. Let's add another loop cut here. Just about end it there. I'm gonna select these faces here. Same with these top ones. I think that looks about right. Let's go delete faces. And then now all you have to do is just fill in fill in the gaps basically, just what we've been doing. So I select four, press F, select these four, and then press F again. Perfect. All right. Cool, so we get this after all that. I know I added more gaps than the reference image, but it really doesn't matter. Now let me try to find another angle here. I know this isn't the best reference image, but I can't tell if it's solid in the middle or if there's a gap. So, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna add a gap in there. So I'm gonna add a loop cut here. Maybe another one down here. I'm gonna select these middle faces here. And we're gonna extrude this down. Actually, before we do that, let me move these up a little bit. You know, I'll go get it perfect, like how, it's, how I'm imagining it in my head. So let's, hmm, I might select more actually. Let me just think it through. You know what, let me select up to here. So I'm gonna go with all of these and then extrude these down. Let's go scale Z zero just to make sure everything's flat. All right, so we got this, which is basically it, right, it's finished here. Cool. And then we're gonna copy these cylinders over. Just add a bit more detail. You know, I'm gonna join these. So like this join into that. Perfect. I'll separate them later, but for now it's just gonna be easier to like move things around. So that's why I'm joining. All right, and that's the end of this video. Uh, thank you for watching all the way through. Um, yeah, the next part should be up in like a couple of days or so. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, click that like, and I'll see you guys in the next part.